today we are going to attempt painting on this small hand fan that I got from Daiso. And I picked up three of these and I'm already voting on, unfortunately it's gonna be closed by the time you guys see it, but I'm voting on my Twitter for what the third design should be. But I am pretty sure that the first two designs are gonna be cherry blossoms because this is gonna be in time for the National Cherry Blossom Festival and plum blossoms because plum blossoms are beautiful and are not appreciated enough. So the materials I'm playing around with today are one paper fan from Daiso and it appears to be mulberry paper. I don't know how well that's gonna take the watercolor, but we're gonna find out. My Mozart watercolors, which I actually really like. Um, a pink lead to do my sketching. The Holbein Shin Gensai watercolors. And I put them in a medium tin so that they'd be easier. These are a little more opaque. And then I also have lots of fine tech shimmery, glimmery colors to kind of add, you know, some beauty and some interest. And I was thinking what I would do is I would spray it with a matte fixative to just to give it a little more longevity um, because it's, it's paper and paint. And while, I mean, people would be welcome to use it, it is gonna degrade over time. So I'm gonna make a little more room for myself. I just wanted to show you guys the materials I planned on using for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch my cherry blossom design onto my fan. And I'm going to hold on to my packaging because I want to put the finished fan in something that will protect it. Oh, it looks like there's actually water on my desktop. So I want to get rid of that first. And slip it. All right. That is our paper fan. And they're actually quite well made considering they are Daiso products. But then again, pretty much everything I've gotten from Daiso has been really high quality compared to um, a similar stores in the US. I have this really nice reference image of sort of arching cherry blossoms. And then I'm gonna start kind of blocking in my cherry blossoms with circles. I always find it's easier when I'm drawing kind of roundish flowers to just start by blocking in where I want them to be. Kind of helps me plan a little bit better. Ooh, I think the, paper, the lead caught the mulberry a little bit. So I need to be careful about that. And I have never, I've never, well, no, I've painted on fans before, but they had, in fact, they were sold for the MTAT, or no, the AWA art auction years ago. I did mochi kitties and mochi um, rabbits. Can't think. And I have not done any fans since. So I a fun challenge to kind of share with you guys. And we're starting with tray blossoms because kind of my favorite. At least for right now. And it's cherry blossom season in Nashville, although it's kind of the tail end now and everything's kind of dying off, which is unfortunate. I love them so much, but that's kind of the beauty of cherry blossoms too, is how fleeting they are. I think this is gonna be a really, and I wish you guys could see a little bit better. I think this is gonna be a really nice fan design now. And I plan on offering them for sale. Well, I could always use the added income from just some hand-painted fan. Ah! <laughs> you remember some hand-painted uh, fans? I also can't say that I wouldn't be horribly disappointed if I got to keep one or two. Especially because like I've tried, I tried to find these online. I haven't tried super hard. I just checked like AliExpress. Um, not AliExpress. I should probably check AliExpress. I checked, um, Oriental Trading, and I didn't care for the fans they had on there. They weren't hand fans like this. And I feel like this kind of hand fan is probably easier. Okay, so 
don't know if you guys can say, see it, but I have a really nice sort of basic design sketched in here. So my next step is to kind of tighten this up before I start painting. I want you guys to kind of see what I'm doing. I mean, I would love for you to actually really see what I'm doing, but unfortunately the pink lead, like the blue lead, is sometimes hard to capture. So let me really zoom in. I'm going to go through and kind of tighten up all these cherry blossoms. And that way I'll have a roadmap for what I'm painting. I know some people can just paint beautifully off the cuff. And I think that's amazing. Like I'm really impressed by their ability to do that. But that's not me. And that doesn't have to be you. It doesn't make you any less of an artist or a painter. It just means you don't paint the same way they do. Voila, we have our finished fan. Wait, no, not quite. So um, I finished sketching in all the cherry blossoms that I think I'm gonna do. And you know, I do have a tendency to get over ambitious. It would be really pretty if I did paint in kind of a blue sky background, but I think I'm gonna avoid doing that because I really don't know how much this mulberry paper can handle. And I noticed that my lead kept catching on the fibers and trying to tear it. So I actually wanna be a little more careful than that. So what I'm gonna end up doing, I think, is I'm going to start by, I wanna start by painting the flowers and then paint the branch, but I think it's smartest if I paint the branch and then I do the flowers. So I have a feeling this paper is not gonna take a lot of water. So I'm gonna work pretty thickly with the watercolor so I'm gonna grab a few soft brushes. It's not that this paper is super delicate. It doesn't seem to be. It just doesn't seem like it takes a lot of water. So I'm gonna channel Gansai Tombi rather than Western. Slap that water on. So I've got my little weld palette here. I've got a cup of clean water. I've got my Como Rebi watercolors. And what I really want is like a dark sepia kind of color. And I'm gonna need a fair bit of it. So unfortunately, I can't really show you guys, just not necessarily enough room. That's probably too thin, but I'm gonna mix the three browns we have and then I'll probably mix in a Payne's Gray. Just trying to bring it down to kind of a sepia color. Also going to grab some Cerise. And some deep blue. Move this out of the way for now. 
Oh yeah, it seems like it does not take thin washes of paint at all. It's probably going to take a really, no, actually, it doesn't take the paint super well, but it also doesn't take forever to dry. Because there are some areas that have already started to dry. And I don't want to super saturate this fan because I also don't want it falling apart on me. And they did say one could paint on it, but I also got it from Daiso. So, if this doesn't work, I may end up using alcohol markers. Not necessarily on this one, but on another one. I picked up three, and I wish I'd gotten more of them. But isn't that what leads to art hoarding? Is like scarcity of a product and then, oh, I'm totally going to use this for like 16 different things and then we use it maybe once. That said, this is kind of easier to paint on than I thought it would be. And while it's not taking the paint quite the way I'd hoped, Actually, it looks kind of pretty like that. So I'm gonna give that a chance to dry and then I'll decide from there. So that dried pretty light and it is actually pre pretty, pretty light. <laughs> it works. Um, what I want to do, I do still want that darker layer. So I'm gonna grab some of the water and kind of take it out into the larger mixing space and then try to mix my color is a little more saturated and a lot more opaque. So I'm grabbing a lot of like Payne's gray, a lot of darker blue until I've got fairly dark enough color. This I think might be dark enough. At least I hope. Now the intention isn't to cover the whole branch, although I'm having some control issues, so that might end up happening. It's just to create some depth and shadow. Oh, still feels a little tacky to the touch. It's an interesting tacky too, like I haven't experienced it with the sort of watercolor papers I've used before so it's like literally a little tacky to the touch. It's a little weird. Oh I think that works. So I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna get started I think with the blossoms. Okay, it looks like, oh, there's still some wet areas over here. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and mix the base color for the cherry blossoms. And I did a tutorial, well, I did the field test, the Western style field test for these, and I found that Carmine and Cerise mixed together into a nice, like almost hot pink, but not quite hot pink, that works really, really well for cherry blossoms. So I'm gonna use these and I'm going to mix them as thick as I can and it still won't be thick enough. That's okay. Got to start somewhere, right? But I'm going to use these as the base for my cherry blossoms. All right, so I'm going to let the branch finish drying and then I can get started with those cherry blossoms. So it looks like my Branches have finally dried, so now we can start working on our flowers. So, as always, I have my handy dandy reference, handy dandy, and I'm ready to get started. And it looks like it is gonna dry light, but maybe not too light. I did mix it a little darker than what I would do on other watercolor papers. 
just since the branch behaves so strangely. And since I'm right-handed, I'm gonna start at the left side and work my way over. And I'm not super concerned about leaving white because I can always go back in with opaque white or gouache. I think if I was an artist who was super confident in her brushwork, like if I'd been trained to do Sumi painting, I would really, really enjoy doing like quick gestural things with this. Sort of what it feels like it was designed to be used for. I'm painting kind of thin in back. That wash would work decently well on this as well. I'm just trying to be careful not to overwork it. Since I'm not familiar with the paper, I'm kind of avoiding, say, wet into wet techniques or attempting to do any sort of real blending. Just sort of using the watercolor to tone and color the area. But I think this could be a good paper or a good surface for letting your brush, the brush strokes shine. A little bit of a tongue twister there. So when you're doing a series of things, and I want to do a series of three, because I have three cans, um, it's always kind of a toss up between trying to stay consistent and everything looks like the, it goes together style and ability wise and uh, using what you've learned to make the other pieces better. Really, it's always a toss up for me. I guess some artists don't really have a dark night of the soul trying to decide that. I haven't decided. See, when it comes to comic pages, once I've finished a chapter, I have no, no problem kind of like using what I've learned to make the next chapter better. But when it comes to doing things in tight succession, I usually want them to be a little more uniform. And the pink we used to sketch this in with is starting to get lost, which is good. And that's kind of the intention. So the first layer on our cherry blossoms is dried. I went and grabbed our carmine and I'm going to start working on the second layer, moving in the same fashion from left to right as I did on the first. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to start tightening up some of those details using this darker red. So giving it a little bit of thought, I realized that before I start adding details with a darker red, I really want to add just some hints of blue. I don't want to saturate the whole fan, but I want to add some ultramarine blue just because I feel like it's looking a little bit plain the way it is now. To do that, I'm going to use some clean water and I just went and got a fresh cup and I only want to add a little bit because 
as you guys see, this paper doesn't take wet media too, too well. And then we're gonna grab a lot of the ultramarine. This should be a good start. If I want anything more concentrated, I can always work directly from the pan. And then again, starting on the left side, I'm not gonna fill in everything. I'm just gonna do kind of a, an outline sort of thing, hopefully. That will convey what I'm hoping to convey without saturating the paper or kind of fatiguing the eye. Say that, and then I realize maybe what I should be doing is covering the paper and then leaving a border around our blossoms, like a halo. And that way we've got kind of like an edigame look. But be careful too, because some of my cherry blossoms are a little damp to the touch. So I don't wanna put too much weight or pressure on them. So this paper is a little delicate when wet. And I'm working quickly and in sections. think doing the all over blue, even though definitely puts a lot more water on the fan than I kind of wanted to do. If it doesn't ruin the fan itself, it's a good idea because it kind of helps those cherry blossoms really seem to bounce a little bit better. All right, so there, the first layer is done. I'm going to give it plenty of time to dry since we just put a lot of water on the paper. And then I think I'll tighten up some of that blue with the darker ultramarine. So, this guy has had plenty of time to dry. So I'm gonna grab the ultramarine and kind of work with it directly, but also kind of with a bit of water to it. Just trying to keep that color consistent. And I actually really like how patchy, I know that sounds sarcastic, but how patchy the color dried because it's got this really soft kind of effect. It makes me want to try doing watercolors on decent sumi paper. Most of what I have is really cheap sumi paper, so. I think though, I did pick up some nicer stuff when I went to Japan, so. Ah, that's what Amazon is for. That said, it's not so much, this hasn't been difficult to do. I've also done something really kind of easy and lightweight. But what has made this the most difficult is honestly kind of working around the slats. Like when I was sketching, they kept catching my pencil. The paper itself, as long as you're super light with what you're trying to do, the paper is not bad. You also, or I also, can't get a lot of like nuanced color out of it. So that's a good thing to know kind of before attempting to do a character illustration. In my poll on Twitter, and it looks like Clover, is winning right now, which is great because I love, I like painting and drawing Clover. I do it a lot for Kara stuff. So it looks like Clover's winning, which is good because I was like tempted to do something Kara related on the third one so that I could use it as like a promo item on my table. And I'm kind of glad it didn't win because I have a feeling doing a character or a portrait or something 
without having any real experience with this paper would have been really frustrating. Okay, so I really like how that looks. And I think after that dries and I can start adding details to the flowers, that's gonna look really good. Let's zoom in so you guys can see a little bit better. So the blue has finally had a chance to dry. I'm gonna go in now with Carmine and just do some of the details. And I may end up redoing some of these details after I've kind of gone over it with white and tightened things up. And again, I'm working from left to right. My, my hand actually has somewhere to sort of rest Give me a little more stability. Even with like really simple kind of stylized illustrations like this fan here, I always found that doing, getting to the detail stage or when I start doing like my first pass of details kind of thing, it always really starts to come together a lot more, it starts to kind of gel for me. But like, this is when things start looking a lot better. They start making sense. So it can be really tempting to start the detail stage really, really early. But then when you start doing layers on top of it, it can start to really fall apart and get muddy. It does not look as good. If you're one of those people who has like a really strong vision in your head of what the end result's gonna look like, that's great. Like I'm seriously envious of you. What I end up having to do is I end up relying really heavily on process and knowing my materials. Because while the art supplies don't necessarily make you a better artist, I sincerely think having a good understanding of the materials you're working with can really help make the difference between success and failure. And that comes a couple ways. Comes through research, can learn a lot, research a lot, come in prepared, but also just experience working with similar materials, working with the materials in the past, loads of practice, just basically investing your time. Oops, sorry about that, guys. And just because you might lack experience in a particular thing doesn't mean you shouldn't. Go ahead, give it a shot, pick it up, read about it, Ask your friends about it. Ask another artist about it. There are loads of ways to kind of gain experience from learning from others. And there are many other artists who are happy to help you out, answer your questions. Looking good so far. I think the next step I wanna do is I wanna introduce some white back into this once it's dry. So I'm going to use my PH Martins bleed proof white if I can track it down, yup. I'm gonna use this to reintroduce some white into this. And I also wanna add a little bit of spring green. Now I might have it in my Mozart palette here, but I might not, I might switch over to my shin palette. Hmm, I have olive green and I have grass green. I may have to mix a green. So before I start doing the white, I actually want to use the sepia I have in the shin gansai. And also I wanted to create kind of a green gold and do some like 
baby bebe leaves. So I'm gonna start with a transparent green gold using the olive green from the Como Rebbe set and then a little bit of lemon yellow. And it's nice that I can take these little pans out because that way you guys can actually see what I'm working with. It's also just convenient to be able to grab the colors I want. Especially since the palette, the lid on the Como Rebbe set doesn't come off. So it actually has a really big footprint when open. That's kind of like my only real problem with that set. All right, so we've got kind of like a new green. When I do paintings like this, I just like kind of relax, kind of loose. I just remember how much I really enjoy painting. I enjoy doing painting for my comic pages too, but those always feel like they have really high stakes and then really low reward. But with this, it's just very relaxing. I like those little pops of green too. Grab some more of the green gold as just plain green gold work pretty thick. And do another layer. So I feel like the fan real, I, I keep forgetting I'm painting on a fan. Um, I feel like it, it takes the watercolor a lot better than I thought it would, especially since I got it from Daiso. Now I really wish I grabbed a bunch, but I mean, then what? They'd have just sat in my closet for five years. Better that I only got three and I might actually use them. My next step, I can put these two away. My next step is to use the sepia from my Shin Gansai set. I feel like this is gonna be a problem because it's not really a good match. Oh. It's okay, I'll make it work. I felt like this branch was too light anyway. I was having trouble mixing it dark enough, so hopefully doing this will fix that problem. Let that dry. And then I'll go in with, this is indigo actually. Maybe I will go in with indigo. So that layer of brown kind of, kind of ruined the, uh, what I had going with the tree. Like I liked how it looked and now it does not look nearly as nice. So. Forever correcting. Oh, should have left it like it was. Actually, really did like it. I did like it after all. It works well, though, on the other branches. Just looks kind of not great on the, on the top branch. Next, I'll grab some of that opaque white. And again, working from left to right, I'll use it, hopefully add in just a few light details, not get too heavy-handed. Now to let that dry. So we are almost at the end of this little hand fan. I do want to go in on that branch that I kind of messed up and reintroduce a highlight. 
and I really regret adding that brown on top of it but it's too late to apologize so I'm going to I've got my fine tech let me see if I can zoom out now for you guys to see it I've got my fine tech mica based watercolors over here and I'm going to use them to add just a little bit I say a little bit it's never a little bit, it's always like a lot. But I'm gonna use them to add some shimmer. And then a little bit in the flowers themselves using a dark red. And then a little bit of white. And that way, if someone actually opts to use this, and I hope they will, it'll hopefully <clears throat> catch the light really well and look even prettier. Then just a light splattering of silver. And then I also have this really nice iridescent color. So I have a few, but I want to use this one. Maybe a little red so that we end up with kind of a pinky color. I think we are just about done with our first fan. The only thing really left to do is to sign it. Kind of want to use something pretty and hopefully it won't bleed through. And that's it. We're done. I look forward to sharing the other two fans with you guys. And I hope you guys will look forward to seeing those videos as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about the materials or techniques used in this video, feel free to let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy watercolor or other sort of art tutorial videos, please check out the rest of my channel and head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys.